I'm Karma Shabrak. Welcome to The A-List. If you tuned into NBC5 Chicago in the morning, you may have seen my guest. Please join me in welcoming NBC5 morning news anchor Stefan Holt on The A-List. Welcome to the show, Stefan. Karma, hey, great. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, it's great to see you. you. Now, what's it like to anchor morning news on a major market like Chicago? You know what? It's, it's very early in the morning that we get in, but it's a lot of fun. We have a great time on the morning show, and I've only been doing it for about uh, three, almost four months now. So I'm still pretty new to doing the early morning anchoring. I was a reporter in the mornings before, and I really like being out in the field and being outside and going to where the stories are. But now we're having a blast on the mornings. It's a lot of fun. That's awesome. Now, um, I know your father, Lester Holt, is a big anchor ran around in NBC. Um, NBC, right? That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> now, did you choose this profession to follow your father's footsteps, or was it just because you wanted to do it? You know what? It was because I wanted to do it, and, and I like to make that clear because it was one of those I, I didn't want to be in broadcasting right off the bat. Uh, I knew I liked it. I was always interested in journalism and news. Uh, mm -hmm. I considered myself a news junkie, and I always liked reading the paper and watching TV. And, and I grew up in a news household where we always talked about the stories that were going on both locally and nationally, and as well as internationally. And uh, it wasn't until I really got into high school that I became interested in camera work, uh, in editing, in, uh, in producing short uh, videos and documentaries and films and things like that. And then eventually I got into news. My original goal, I was really interested in politics and I was interested in becoming a, a pilot. I loved flying, I love airplanes, that's my other passion. And uh, I eventually decided that broadcasting was for me. I, I love reporting the news, uh, reading about the news. And uh, I was in college that uh, I declared broadcast journalism as my major. And uh, right after college, I got my first job as a reporter. Was there anything that major happened that made you choose to be an anchorman? Or was it just you just decided that you liked it more? I just liked it more. Um, I, I just I, I found that flying was uh, something that I loved as, and aviation was something I loved as a passion. And, uh, and sometimes it's better to separate work from your fun stuff. I'd rather do flying for fun than do it professionally. And not to say that I don't have fun doing journalism and broadcasting. And uh, in college, there were several stories that I got to cover uh, on the campus television station, much like RBTV, um, that really got me into it. We had a huge wildfire on campus one day. Uh, it was breaking news stories, smoke, fire. Uh, in Southern California, there's a lot of wildfires, and uh, that news bug kicked in, said, grab a camera, and I went and shot tons of footage and, and did several reports, and it's those breaking news stories that, uh, that get you excited about the career. Would you say that's the most interesting story that happened? Certainly you? one of the most interesting that I've covered. I've covered a lot of different stories. Um, the Bernie Madoff story uh, was one that I covered a lot in South Florida. Uh, I was working in West Palm Beach and Bernie Madoff had a home there and a lot of investors that were down there that lost hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars in the investment swindle. Um, so that was an interesting story to cover. Um, I also covered several murder trials, high profile trials wow. down in Florida. Um, some There was uh, some crazy stories involving uh, murder for hire and a husband and wife, yeah. um, stuff that you see on Dateline, things like that. And then here in Chicago, uh, we've covered a lot of interesting stories as well. Uh, the Blagojevich verdict came down uh, just, I, I'd been on the job maybe not even for two, three weeks, and, uh, and the verdict came down about that. And then I covered his departure going to prison as well. So um, lots of interesting stories. And we were just mm -hmm. talking about it off camera, but the NATO summit is coming this week, and that's another story that we'll get to cover. And, yeah. uh, and looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, what is the worst and the best part of being an anchorman? I, I joke in saying this, the hardest part is waking up early in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, usually my alarm goes off around 1, 1 1.30. Sometimes I'll push it and stretch it to 2. <laughs> uh, but wow. usually I get in around, uh, around 2.45, 3 o'clock in the morning. Wow. And uh, we start uh, going over the day's news, uh, what stories are going to be on the news. So you go to bed early? <laughs> I go to bed very early. Wow. Very early. I'm, I'm early to bed and then imagine. early to rise as well. <laughs> and uh, we get things going. We go to the newsroom and there's a lot of people there. And uh, we start figuring out the day's stories. And, and 
and uh, even though that's the hardest thing about waking up early, it's a great crew, it's a great team, it makes it all the worthwhile. And the best part is you get to tell some really interesting stories sometimes and, and be at the be at the events. You know, at NATO, we have reporters that are going to be there where the summit is being held at the McCormick Place. We're mm -hmm. going to have people there where the protests are being held as well. It's, it's nice to be uh, there at the center of it all and be the one telling folks about it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, that sounds like it. Um, is there a person or a story or something that you still would like to cover? Still would like to cover. You know, I'm always interested in covering different stories. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I have people that send me ideas all the time, and, and I like to see different ideas and, and flush them out and turn them into a story idea. Um, so particulars, uh, I don't have any off the top of my head right now. I'd love to interview, uh, I think I'd like to interview Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Mm -hmm. He seems like an interesting person to talk to, and I'd love to sit down and talk to him uh, in office, then hopefully one day when he's out of office, about his time here in Chicago. Uh, we just hit the year mark that he's been mayor of Chicago. And, um, you know, I'd also like to interview, I think, uh, President Obama would be a fascinating Definitely. person to interview. Uh, but then there's also pop people. Um, you know, I'm a big music fan, so Tony Bennett is, uh, is one of my favorites. I know that people are like, that's cheesy stuff, and why yeah. would you want to interview him? But uh, I think he'd be a fascinating person to talk to, just about his career, about his music, yeah. um, and just about who he is as a person. Now, um, did you travel at all? Have you traveled to different places? I have. Um, when I was in Florida, I traveled to the Bahamas uh, for a story. And uh, it was a story about a, a woman from West Palm Beach who was murdered in the Bahamas. So I got to uh, travel to uh, Nassau and do a story there. Oh. And from Florida, it's only a 15-minute flight. It's a yeah. <laughs> just you're up and you're down and, and you're in the Bahamas. But, um, you know, I haven't gotten a chance to go to the Middle East or to, to any of the other hot spots in the, country, in the world right now. I'd love to. I love traveling uh, personally. You what know, would you say your favorite place is? Favorite place? Um, that you've traveled to. That's tough to say. Um, I've traveled to so many different places that are unique in their own way. Mm -hmm. um, I spent uh, quite a bit of time in London, England. I was an intern there with NBC News when I was doing a study abroad program in college. And uh, I had a lot of fun in London. It's a great town. And, and England is, is beautiful as well. It's a great starting point if you want to go anywhere in Europe. And uh, had a blast there. It's great. Now, you, your father has obviously made an influence on your career. Mm -hmm. How would you say that you're going to make your own name for yourself? I mean, I know you have you start your own like morning now and you have your own your your own anchor man, but what are you going to do that will give you your own name? You know what's interesting is um, it's uh, watching my dad as a, as a child growing mm -hmm. up around him and, and his business and what he was doing as an anchorman here in Chicago as well as in New York. Um, I got a lot of early on lessons mm -hmm. about, uh, a lot of lessons, you know, just from days, uh, I'll never forget, we were at a Halloween party and, and my dad said, oh, breaking news, I gotta leave, you know, gotta go. And, and, and learning those lessons early on, it makes you realize about the time when you have to start a family. Mm -hmm. um, eventually when breaking news happens, the, you just gotta get up and go. And so I was very blessed in that respect that I was able to see those lessons early on and, uh, and get a first hand look at broadcasting. So I'm, I'm very thankful for that. I used to hang around TV stations as a kid all the time. Um, so it was great to have those early lessons. And I, and I think, you know, as my own person, I, I try and, and move on uh, and do my own thing. Um, certainly, I am following in my father's footsteps, and I'm very, as I mentioned, very blessed to have those footsteps to follow. But also, I've kind of taken a different path than he has. And, and it's just a different time. Uh, you know, when my father was first starting in television, mm -hmm. uh, the broadcast industry was completely different in terms of the technology that was being used, in terms of the on-demand aspect yeah. of television and broadcast news. You didn't have Twitter. You didn't have the internet to do research. Uh, you know, back then, the, the, it was funny, my dad was talking about how they used film in the field. So sometimes he wouldn't see the finished product of a story until it was on TV. Airing. And now we use laptops to edit. Uh, we can send videos and clips back to the station mm -hmm. thanks to the World Wide Web. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work on, in my own right and, and, uh, and do my own thing. Um, but again, I'm very thankful to have my father in my life. Yeah. Um, now, what have you seen? How have you influenced Chicago? Like how have I influenced Chicago? Um, hopefully in a good way. Mm -hmm. um, I've only been here for uh, just a little under a year. It'll be a year next month. And, um, you know, hopefully it's been a good way. Um, it's hard. It, it, the news is, is a tough business in the respect that there are a lot of ugly stories that we have to tell. Mm -hmm. uh, being a reporter, you get a first-hand look at a lot of things you wish you'd never seen. 
and, and a lot of stories that uh, as a reporter you have to put on a professional face and you have to deliver them. And at the same time, as a person, you think, wow, this is a tragedy. This is really a sad story. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a terrible thing. And, um, you know, that's, that's certainly the hard thing. But, um, you know, my, my approach to it is if it's a story that's going to make someone pause and think about something, maybe a change to action or maybe the way uh, they treat another person in life, then that's a good day. I know it's entirely optimistic and I'm more of a glass half full kind of guy. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, that's a good day in my book, is when someone actually looks at the story, the context of a story, and it makes them think. Now, would you, do you get any threatening, like, do you get any threats? Like, threats? No. I mean, uh, and I hope I don't get any. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're delivering scary stories, I would assume that some people aren't happy. I, you know, we've had people come in the field and, and, and yell at us and, and say, what are you doing here? Yeah. You know, go away. Um, and you know it's tough. Uh, people see cameras and they see reporters mm -hmm. and they think of you know ruthless, you know muckrakers who are trying to uh, sensationalize a story. And and, and I try not to sensationalize something. Um, you know we, we, we shed light on stories, and uh, and sometimes it's hard to put it completely in context. And it's easy to see things as just oh well you're. You're just trying to put something on TV, um, but you know there are a lot of stories that we cover, and, and we try and be fair, and we try and be honest, and um, you know I, I just try and explain to people like, look, I'm just trying to do my job, just like you're trying to do your job, mm -hmm. and um, you know it, it's hard, it's hard sometimes, and it's frustrating because things are very emotional. I'll bring up the example. There was a story in Bridgeport, a young teenager was uh, beaten uh, by a bunch yeah. of other teens, and they were trying to steal his backpack. And it was all recorded on camera and posted to YouTube. And the video was very graphic. You see this young man getting punched and kicked, and they're yelling and, and cussing at him. And uh, we showed the video on TV. I was doing a live report where the beating happened. Mm -hmm. And um, I got a nasty email from a guy who said, what? how dare you? Yeah. Why, why do you show this on TV? And I said, well, you know, the hope is that this inspires you to, A, have a conversation with your kids uh, about teen violence. but B, you can see the people that are doing this. If someone knows who those kids are, they can report this to the police. And sure enough, people saw the video and were able to get those people, uh, those suspects, apprehended and charged. And, you know, it's a terrible situation. Again, we don't like showing those things yeah. on TV. But if it can affect change, if it can do a good service, um, that's great. And sometimes it doesn't always do that, but we try. We certainly try our best. Well, I'm sure it's making an impact on people. But um, I wanted to thank you, Stefan, for yeah. coming on the Can't show A-List. Thank you for tuning on to A-List.